Alright, hey guys, um, just do another video today. I uh, wanted to just show you guys kind of the setup that I'm doing. This is going to be pretty much the first time I've tried doing this. Last time I tried doing this, I had some issues with my chronograph. Um, but I'm just going to show you real quick what's going to, what we're going to be using to get our measurements and all that kind of stuff. So basically, up first, this is the Cadwell G2 chronograph. Um, this is what we're going to be using for inside. So our range, starting back here from the table, you probably can't see, but we're shooting out this doorway. So our line of sight is going to be down here. But we're shooting out here. And I'll show you guys where our target's set up. And we've got another chronograph. So I'm going to flip the camera around. Alright, so we've got our little spotter target right there. That's where we're just going to make sure that we're hitting where we're hitting. The other chronograph that we're going to be using is this Digital Pro Chrono. Uh, this is one of my favorite chronographs. I've got the little Bluetooth adapter for it, and I've got the in indoor light shade, um, but we're outdoors for right now. And then 10 yards behind the chronograph is our target. So, basically... The chronographs are measured 40 yards apart, which isn't, I know, ideal, but this is the first time I'm, you know, experimenting with this, and I don't want to shoot one of my chronographs. So, we're going to test it at 40 yards, which is enough to get some idea of the drag model, or, you know, how fast they're going to decelerate. Um, we're going to be shooting at 50, chronographs are set up 40 yards apart from center to center. Um, we're going to be testing 218s and maybe talking about some other stuff so alrighty all right what up guys and gals air gunners of all ages and all that good stuff hope everybody's doing good enjoying their sunday um today we're going to be testing some stuff out and i'm just going to be sharing you know, some more of my tuning experiences, and uh, we're going to gather some ballistic coefficient data today. We're going to use two chronographs set up at known distances and check to see how fast these slugs decelerate. So I got myself a little box of stuff that I punched up this morning and have been testing, uh, testing out a little bit. I've been testing out the 218 die um, and switched from the 217s. I got pretty decent results with the 217s, but I did notice I'd get like some weird flyers every now and then. Um, so I wanted to see if the 218s would remedy, remedy that. And the 217s made my barrel really dirty, really fast. Um, which so far I've seemed to have been getting more consistent, favorable results with the 218s. And I actually picked up about seven or eight feet per second um, on average, which tells me that they're sealing better in the barrel. So here's kind of the sample pack. You can ignore the stuff on, on this side because this is the 217 that I just put in here to um, free up some tins and whatnot. So we're going to be testing most of the stuff on this side here, which is going to be, we have a 218. Uh, this is a 20, most of these are all going to be 23.1 grain, simply because I'm trying to test the BC to see what the different back shapes uh, translate in as far as flight efficiency. So are the hollow backs less efficient than the cut backs, or the cut backs less efficient, or I mean, than the dish backs? Are the dish backs less efficient than the cut backs and the flat backs up to the boat tails and so on? So what we did, or what I did this morning, is we got some 23.1 cut backs. So we'll be testing this out. We got the same 23.1 dish back. We'll be testing that out. And then since I haven't played around with the flat backs too much because I was generally getting better results with the cup and dish backs, we're gonna try out the 218 flat backs, which are actually flying really good. I just started shooting these yesterday. 
So I'm curious to see if the flat backs have a better BC than the cup and dish back and hollow back. And then we've got some, some boat tails. Um, from some of the measurements I did, 29, what are these, 29.2 seems to be about, uh, about the lightest that these will shape well. Uh, 28.2 was the shortest I was able to get and still maintain the proper diameter before it starts to cut into the ogive surface and you start to actually get a narrower projectile. Um, so basically, uh, I'm just testing out the gear as well. Um, if this all works well, we're going to set this up at 100 yards and do some different tests at 100 yards uh, using the same chronographs and the same setup and to get a more complete ballistic coefficient picture. The other thing that we might incorporate, I'm not 100% sure, but my uncle also got another one of these G2 ballistic precision chronographs. So we might set up three chronographs, um, but in case we don't, this is going to serve as like the phase one of flight. So at doing a BC at 40 yards might not seem uh, ideal, and it, to be honest, it isn't to get a complete ballistic picture. But I am curious if the first 40 yards experiences a less efficient flight than the last 60 yards. Right, so if my BC is worse in 40 yards than it is at 100, it tells me that the bullet's coming out of the barrel slightly unstable and it's using some of its energy to stabilize. Um, then I can kind of address the tune, maybe get a more efficient flight. Um, but anyway, that's what we're going to try and maybe figure out today. So I'm just waiting for my other cameras to charge up and so I can get all this stuff on film and uh, I don't get a bunch of, you know, questionable results. So anyway, that's the plan. Um, that's what we're going to be trying to do. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned. All right, hey guys, I'm going to try and do some uh, BC calculations real quick. Um, I think I showed you the chronograph downrange, got the croning right here, I've got a variety of different slugs we're going to shoot, and I'm trying to get through this somewhat quick so I don't fill up my memory card down there, although I guess it doesn't really matter because I have a camera filming down there as well. So we got um, a whole variety, I'll kind of explain that in a different um, clip for now, I'm just going to kind of do the shooting and get that done and out of the way with. So, I'm going to start with uh, these 19.5 grain hollowback slugs. We're going to do six shots. One just to make sure we're aimed properly. And then we're going to do a few over the other chronograph and see what our BC is. Um, so I've got all the dimensions of these written down, and I will go over that after we get done shooting. But just wanted to go ahead and get this started. So again, this is the 19.5 grain 218 hollow base. Um, right now, I got my gun tuned to about 140 bar. Um, and you'll see what kind of power that's producing. Hopefully my crony is hooked up on here. Uh, my other crony is Bluetooth to my tablet down there, so hopefully we'll get a uh, shot of that. Alright, so pretty sure I already zeroed onto this. We are set. Oops, this first shot's going to be a little slow. Eight eighty. Well, we'll leave it at eight eighty. So that's a nineteen point five grain cutback, um, and that's shooting respectably enough. This is not. All right, for some reason, this isn't connecting to my phone at the moment. So I'll just read it off. That was eight hundred eighty-one feet per second. 
Now over the other chrome graph, get this lined up here. Eight seventy five, or no, eight fifteen. So we start at eight eighty two up here. You write this down. So one of the things I'm going to be checking is do, like what's the BC difference from a hollow base to a dish base. So that was 882 as well. And that was 821 downrange. Same hole. Um, so one of the things is just see it. Does the BC uh, substantially worse with a cup base or a hollow base? And if not, then you know let's let's see what kind of performance we can squeeze out of it. So Eight twelve. Sorry guys, this isn't going to be the most exciting video ever. I'm just trying to get you guys some numbers and show you how I'm doing it. Um, I will have to factor in barometric pressure and all that stuff after the fact. So right now I'm just going to collect my numbers. And we'll see what we get for an average. All right, so that was the 19 grain hollow base. These are all gonna be 218s too. So, um, just as an FYI, I already kind of ran through a lot of the 217s. The 217s didn't, um, you know, the BC shouldn't be too much different. So we got that. The other thing that I'm going to be doing here, guys, is these are all, um, the rest of these are all going to be 23 grain. The cutbacks, the 19 grains there, are the same length as the 22, or as the 23 flat back. So that's where I got that idea from. So now we're going to do two, five shots with the 23 dish back. Right? Yeah, 23 dish back. Because that is the next hollowest cabin. Um, oops. I'm going to turn the power up on this just because it's a little heavier. Shoot the CD. That's already loaded one in there. I'm on the ball today, guys. Just letting you know. You know, expect have high result, high hopes. All right. So close distance was eighty six. Now keep in mind. We just changed grains by four, four grains or something, 819. Okay. So that's quite a bit more power. Six again. That's 
two dupes in a row over both chronographs. Maybe my other chronograph isn't reading. Fill that one in because that was a dupe for the last shot. So we got a couple of dupes there. And I think that does it or the 23, so that's the cup. CP H So on to the dish back. So notice I'm not having to single load any of these, all these up to even the 29.2 grain boat tails, which yes, we are going to run some boat tails if I can get to them. Um, so this is the same way, this is the cutback. We're just measuring to see if there is a difference in BC performance. You know, if these fly faster than the cutbacks do. So that duped 888, and we got 824 downrange. Alright. 816 and 888 again. Eight. So I'm not seeing a substantial change in the um, retained energy downrange. This thing, dupe five. I don't know if I've ever got five duplicates out of the dream line. I know this is not the most uh, entertaining video to watch, unless you like seeing me struggle. Uh, right, it's chicken scratch. <laughs> All right, so that was the dish back. So now, here's where we might see a change in BC: is the flat back. Uh, so in theory, this will have none of the cavitation, or like, um, not none of the cavitation, but the way that the air collapses behind this is going to be different than the previous three that have a cavity, essentially, in the back. These are all 218s, um, and they're all pretty close to the same length. So that's why I think this is, should be a good test. And the 23 grains seem to be about the shortest that perform well out of most, well, most uh, air rifles.
All right, so now we're on to 23 grain, 23.1 grain again, 218, flat back this time. That's not what I expected. Wow. Eight ninety two. So I'm getting a battery error. I gotta go change the battery in my other chronograph real quick and we will pick right back up in just a second. All right, we're back. Battery is changed. We are back, uh, flat backs, doing the thing. Bluetooth connectivity downrange. So, uh, talk while I'm shooting a little bit. Um, I have not done some of the other stuff that I wanted to do with uh, the Dreamline because my Ed Gun gauge got the wrong address put on it. So, I have never received my Ed Gun gauge, um, it is lost in the post office somewhere. It's supposed to be here like three weeks ago. Um, right. So now that was the flat back. Let's do a boat tail. Let's see what these uh, twenty eight point two boat tails do. This is the shortest boat tail I could get that. At their same diameter or the proper diameter. Um, I haven't shot a whole lot of the boat tails just because they're a little hefty, but we'll give them a shot. It's more for BC comparison than anything. Now I have a flat back that's in the same weight too. I have a 29 flat back that we will try out as well as a 20, 80, 25 gram flat back. So I have no idea where these are going to hit, so I'm going to shoot one at my spotter target. Okay. That was what, like an inch low? Not bad. There we go. Oh, okay, maybe not. Let's see here. So that left at you call him here. 
So we do 820 to 7, 745. Let's turn this up a little bit more. Eight fifty seven eighty one eight fifty one two seven eighty one. Got kind of some weird light situations downrange. Uh, we have another one of these ballistic G2 curling graphs that we might set up. At some point, but we're just gonna see how these do for now. Uh, both these chronographs read the same speed. And with that, I think I probably need to refill my gun. Alright. Hello again. Alright, so I'm going to take a break from recording the, the shooting process because uh, this is entirely too tedious and everything uh, to get on camera right now. Um, but I've got some stuff I'm going to be going over. I've got everything from like 218s, or I got all the, not all the different, but basically what I'm going to be doing is testing to see what the D BC difference, if any, between flat base and all the different base types, you know, hollow base and all that kind of stuff, as well as trying to determine, you know, some good performers. Um, we've had some, some feedback that the 218 um, hollow backs were performing well out of the crawls. Um, likewise, they also, or the 25 hollow base did well out of my hats in 25 caliber. Um, let's see. Also, the 34 and 36 grain dish base did well out of the Hatson in 25 caliber. Um, the 22, I need to do some more testing with the Hatsons. Um, break the dust off those things. In this, um, the hollow base did really poorly in 25 for whatever reason out of all the FX guns that we've tried. Um, now they've gotten, they shot really good out of my hats in the 25, but they did not shoot well out of my 25 on Dreamline or on the Impact for that matter, or the Crown, which we have 25 barrels for all those. Um, so we do have a 249 die coming. It's a two stage die. It's going to be real similar to um, another slug that's available in, in design. It's going to be hollow, but the opposite of the hollow base that we that that we have to be like a hollow front, basically. Um, so let's see here. Um, so I guess I'm gonna start calculating up the rest of this. I'll probably put the results of the rest of the ones I didn't test in this this round. Um, I'll give you guys the results, you know, in, in a later video. Um, it's, it's to address to the, um, you know, I had said something about being able to get the uh, the hammer spring up to snuff, you know, at 155, 160 bar uh, operating pressure without doing anything, modifying the gun at all without shims. Um, I think Air Gunner's Edge had mentioned something about that. And let me just throw this out there. Um, 
I will take the gun apart and show you guys the differences inside. I don't know if I'll do that right now in this video, but I will in the next uh, week or so. Um, so this is the bullpup, obviously. Um, the classics, this isn't going to work the same. So back here, there is actually an additional, um, this whole back chunk is additional. This isn't on the classic. The classic hammer adjustment is a little different. So um, what I ran into problems with is there's a little Allen key underneath here that you can tighten up. And I had my hammer wheel set about where it is, you know, on max. And that's what I was told to do so that you don't over tension your, uh, um, your Allen screw, right? Well, I noticed that it got real tight and once it got so tight, it felt like it was possibly going to damage the threads. I just stopped adjusting it and figured that was the max that you could get the hammer spring to. And that stopped opening the hammer or the valve all the way at around 149 to 150 bar. Uh, I stopped noticing positive gains. Then I watched a couple other videos. I think Meathead Marksman talks about this. Um, I think Ernest Rowe talks about it in kind of a different way. And I think Ted from Ted's Holdover might even talk about this a little bit. Now these are all for impacts or other, other FX guns, but they have the same hammer adjuster, right? So what they did was turn their hammer wheel to minimum to release the tension on that little Allen nut. Then you can tighten it a little bit. And as long as you can still roll your wheel back to max without it binding or grinding or doing anything weird, it still feels nice and smooth, then you can keep increasing your hammer tension. And believe me, once you get to the point where you have to turn your dial down to minimum to increase your, your hammer spring, each turn that you make starts to make a pretty stout difference. Um, I was able to gain maybe another 10 or 12 quarter turns or whatever turn is accessible from the side here without disassembly um, past what I thought was the max previous to that. And then, then I was able to get, you know, higher powers up into 160, 165 bar um, and, you know, get upwards of, I think the highest I got was 49, like real close to 50 foot pounds. Um, and that was without putting any kind of springs or shims or doing anything other than what, you know, FX claimed this gun was, or the regulator and stuff. I don't know if they ever claimed that the Dreamline was capable of this, but they claimed that the regulator and a lot of the parts in this were supposed to be able to handle that. I put that to the test. My valve broke, so I turned it back. I'm still able to get adequate power um, with a slug and that high BC. Um, which is going to be at least north of 0.06. Um, I guess this is one thing I did not do. And while I got you guys on camera, see if my other chronograph is still on. It is not. I'll have to run down there and turn my other chronograph on real quick. But I wanted to benchmark it against the infamous JSB Jumbo Heavy 18.1. Uh, Three grain. This is kind of a hallmark uh, that a lot of us air gunners used as, you know, not only some of the best shooting, but this is a great, you know, before the Hades and stuff came out, this was a great hunting pellet um, just because they're soft lead and they retain their energy better than a 14 grain. They have more energy to start with than a 14 grain pellet, which would be like a Crossman which is a harder lead anyway. But I'm gonna run down there and turn the other crony off or on and we'll test the JSB heavy, uh, jumbo heavy, and see what the BC is, of that is. So, one second. All right, so JSBs, 18.1s. Let's see what their numbers look like. Ooh, forgot to turn that down. <laughs> 1,024. Let's dial that back just a bit. Let's give it a respectable chance. I'm surprised that was even stable. That was still going 840 feet per second. 
from <laughs> Oh, good times. Makes you laugh right there. 840. So what I'm doing guys is I'm just reading the crying through the scope. So turn that back down to C. Two for slugs. I'm having a hard time. Still smoking fast. Eight eighteen. Right. So that right there. This will be an interesting comparison right here for you guys. That's a realistic pellet speed. 908. 758. Do more. of a 27 power scope. take a break, uh, crunch these numbers, I gotta put in the barometric pressure, I will be using, I didn't bring it out here with me, but I'll be using the weather flow uh, anonymeter weather station, it's Bluetooth, runs through Strelock, um, that's what I'm going to be using to calculate my BC width instead of chair gun, because chair gun uh, is specifically for pellets and references everything in a GA BC, which is not um, the same drag model that is specifically designed around a Diabolo shape, a skirt based pellet, traditional pellet shape, um, which would probably yield, you know, a very good looking number, but for realistic purposes, using real ballistic calculators. Not saying the chair gun isn't, but for slugs, we can get much better pictures with a G1 coefficient, uh, which I can use in Strelock, and we'll be cross-referencing our BC with G1 uh, parameters. So I'll put that together, and we'll take a look at the JSPs. So one thing I can say right here, right off the bat, is, the uh, the performance difference, um, like the hollow backs at 880, 881, we're hitting the target at 812. Um, that's hitting the target faster by 40 feet per second on average than a JSB going 905, um, and that's a 19 grain slug. So the energy difference there as far as weight difference, you know, if you can shoot an 18 JSB at, um, well, okay, so a good example, you guys just seen the numbers that I, I was shooting at max, which I didn't shoot max on any of these except for the 29 grain boat tail. Um, everything else I was either shooting on my A or B or C setting. I was shooting my hollow backs on C, and that was giving me 882 uh, pretty consistently. And B setting on the JSBs gave me around 980. So um, maybe that's 
kind of a benchmark to tune your, you know, if you're shooting, if you can get your JSB 18 shooting 980, you could probably shoot a 19.5 grain slug at 880, which is still pretty flat. Um, and you could probably even get more out of it from there. But um, according to my two chronographs up just now, my, uh, that JSB hit the target if I shot it at 980 feet per second, it hit the target going 818 feet per second, which is the same speed that these 19.5 uh, grain slugs were hitting the target at going 880. So it's traveling 100 feet less out of the muzzle, they hit the target going the same speed. That's the difference in shape of your projectile. Um, so I'm gonna take a quick break, crunch the rest of these numbers, put numbers, to the rest of my numbers. I know that made a whole bunch of sense. If that didn't give you a headache, then just stay tuned. You'll get one. <laughs> so, uh, I'll probably finish in the rest of this in a different video, but the stuff that we covered today, which was the hollow backs, the cut backs, dish backs, and flat backs, and a few boat tails, um, We'll get the numbers in this video for those, uh, just for some kind of comparison. We, I will be refining this setup and uh, doing this inevitably at 100 yards, ideally. Um, and then I'll be real interested to cross-reference these 40-yard numbers to see if you know the next 50 yards is more efficient or less efficient, and that will tell me how stable my tune is. Meaning, is the pellet doing this out of the barrel, or is it going? perfectly straight. So, uh, let me crunch some numbers real quick and we'll get back to you. All right. So, just did the numbers. Uh, I'll have to double check the JSB. Let me do that right now. I'm just going to use the chair gun BC for, um, this so um, let's see y'all projectiles 22 um, so you're saying that's a point three three point oh three three GA alright so, 0.033 GA, uh, let's see here, I forgot to look up the foot pounds. Let's see here, 760, that's 23 foot pounds. All right, so now I've got our comparison. I can go ahead. I'll let you guys know. So, the JSB 18 grain with a BC of 0.033, flying at 900 from the muzzle, hit the target at 766, has 23 foot pounds of energy on target at 40 yards, where our second chronograph was set up. Um, in comparison to the slugs that were flying. 20 feet per second slower from the muzzle at 19.5 grains with a BC of 0.065. Yeah, 0.065. We were hitting with 28 foot pounds of energy at 40 yards. Moving on to the flat backs, which I actually thought would have a slightly higher BC than the others, actually had a slightly lower BC than the others at 0.06. Um, that was yielding 892 at the muzzle with an average of around 810 on target with 33 foot pounds of energy at 40 yards. Um, I forgot to put in the foot pound energy for the boat tail, which was substantially higher with a 0.07 BC, but that was also a lot heavier. Um, let me punch that in real quick. Twenty-nine point two um, eight fifty. All right. 
at 40 yards. Wow, 40 foot pounds of energy with the boat tails traveling at 850 feet from the muzzle, arriving on target with an average of 773 feet to 780 feet per second, giving a BC of about 0.07 um, with 40 foot pounds of energy at a 40 yard target. Moving on to the dish base at a BC of 0.065, uh, same type of energy, uh, 33 foot pounds on target, and it was the same with the cup base as well. The cup base had maybe uh, the overall highest average, um, surprisingly. So right around 0.065 to 0.07 um, would be a good BC to calculate if you're using Streelock Pro. Um, if you put in the rest of your data properly, that should put you within a tenth of a mil on your, uh, on your 100 yard targets, at least it has been for me so far. But that's just some BC verification data. Um, this will get better. This was kind of just the first test run. Um, so bear with me and we'll get some more thorough testing. Um, one of these days I'm gonna do some more work with the Hatsons, um, but I don't have a lot of confidence in my personal Hatson because I know that the barrel choke is really, really subpar. Um, and I don't know if there's anything that's gonna shoot accurately out of it until I change the barrel out. And I'll show you why in another video. Um, but for the purpose of just keeping this short, or at least on topic anyway, we're gonna cut it off there. Um, if you guys notice I'm doing anything wrong or you have some tips or suggestions or you'd like to see this done with something else, uh, let me know. I wanted to get the 177 out here um, but we're gonna have some family coming over shortly, so I'm running out of time. Um, but we're gonna be doing a 177 BC test with uh, my uncle's crown. And just as a FYI, guys, he's been shooting 17 with slugs with a pellet barrel and getting phenomenal results. Um, he's doing real good with like the 21 grain bow tails and stuff like that. So if you guys are interested in a tiny little evil slug that's got some serious 100 yard potential. I've seen him hold MOA groups, no problem, sub MOA groups at 100 with 17. Um, it's pretty impressive. So and he's doing that without a slug barrel, um, just a regular old pellet barrel um, on the ground. So, all right guys, uh, till next time, I hope this helps. I'll, I will give you like a, a better explanation on the hammer adjustment other than what I gave in this little crap here. Um, but essentially, yeah, you can, you can adjust this Allen. If you have the classic or another variant of the Dreamline that does not have the hammer adjust wheel in the back, which I believe is just the classic or the Aeron chassis, if you got that, then your hammer spring is going to be a little different. Um, there's actually a bolt inside here that I think you use a four millimeter or 4.5 or something. Air Gunner's Edge actually has video of how to adjust the classic. Um, so I will be showing you guys how to do it with the, the models that have the hammer spring adjuster, which would be the tack, the light, um, the compacts, as well as the bullpup models. Um, I'll be doing that in the future. And I haven't forgot about you guys in Peru and Chile. Somebody was asking me about shot count at 30 foot pounds with the JSV heavies. Um, I haven't done it exactly because I haven't detuned my gun yet. Um, I'm waiting until I get my new gauge to do that, which who knows when that will be. But right now I can say it's going to be around 70 at least. Um, if I tune my regulator down to 120, probably do even better. So, all right, guys. Um, shoot straight. Until next time. Bye. Hey yeah, guys, I just wanted to give you an update real quick on the BCs. I just used um, JBM Ballistics Calculator. Uh, it's a website um, to run a separate set of numbers. Um, and I got 
some different numbers from what Strelock provided me, and I don't know if that's because the atmospherics is different. I was able to manually put in the exact atmospherics that my weather system told me, so that's matching. Um, sometimes my Bluetooth thing doesn't work with Strelock, and it puts in some different atmospherics, so I'm not sure if that's the difference. But <clears throat> to recap, the cup base had a BC with Strelock of 0 .065, with the JVM ballistics calculator, um, it gave me a BC of 0 .085. The um, dish base gave me a BC of 0 .074 with the JMB uh, calculator, and with Strelock, it gave me a 0 .065. The flatback was 0 .06 with both. Um, the hollow base, 0.078, that's way better than I thought it was going to be, and the JSB came out with a 0.034, um, so I just wanted to give you a second set of numbers, um, because there was some discrepancy there. I, I forgot to rerun the boat tail, um, but I'm assuming that the boat tail is going to have an even better um, BC than what I previously guessed it at of 0.07. So, anyway, that's all. Alright, hope that helps, guys. Um, see you later. Bye.